So Indonesia is facing one of the biggest infrastructure challenge. And so even its existence on the map of the world is in danger. Yes, the ground is subsiding and the sea as a result is replacing the land. So what's the solution then? Well, Indonesia is considering building a massive seawall along the northern coast of Java to save the island, particularly its largest city, Jakarta, from sinking and eventually being submerged. But before we dive into the project details, I'd like you to subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit that like button. So the news is that critics have warned spending such a hefty price of 60 billion US dollars on this project would only aggravate the ecological and social crisis in the region. Experts have urged the government to adopt a more environmentally friendly and socially just approach to the water-related problems. If you're new to this fact, let me tell you an interesting fact. Parts of Jakarta sink up to 25 centimeters annually because of excessive groundwater extraction and urban development. So to stop that, they need to build the giant seawall to stop the land from sinking and the sea from flooding, which keep happening all the time. If it comes to fruition, the project would include the building of a 120 km, 74.5 mile coastal and river dike by 2030, and an adaptive seawall to the west and east of Jakarta by 2040, before closing the seawall with a reservoir by 2050. So, now let's try to explore and let's find out the reasons why Jakarta is sinking. You know what the rate with which the Jakarta is sinking is exceptional. As per one estimate, we got the figure that it has subsided by approximately 4 meters since 1970. I mean, for meters. That's a horrible figure. Let's say if you've got a house of over one story, you might already be under the water if you'd be living in the same place. But why is it so? I mean, why after all, Jakarta is sinking? Let's find out. Well, Jakarta has got a significant problem of water for residents. So, the only source they've got is to use the groundwater for their everyday life. And you know what? The groundwater is a thing that's got that pushing force making Earth stable. So, once the water is out, the land starts to sink. So, that means all the houses and the buildings in that region starts going down by a marginal number, but over time it goes big. Similarly, the surface water got the obstacle and doesn't find a way to reach the ocean, and resultantly, we got huge flooding. The Jakarta City Administration's target is to finish the first phase of a program to build coastal embankments under the National Capital Integrated Coastal Development Project by 2027. To your surprise, they've already done a part, a 13 kilometers, 10.6 miles, of the planned 46 kilometers, 28.5 miles of the embankment, have been constructed. But this subsidence has also caused enormous monetary loss to Indonesia. As per one estimate, the region loses 2.1 trillion rupiah, US $135 million, per year, which could rise to 10 trillion rupiah, $642.7 million, per year in the next decade if no measures were taken and the flooding worsens. Java is Indonesia's most populous and economically important island. Land subsidence or sinking is a serious problem in Java's coastal areas, especially Jakarta and Semarang in central Java province, making them more vulnerable to tidal floods, saltwater intrusion, and water shortages. The government said the decline in groundwater levels in the northern coast of Java is 1 to 25 centimeters per year, while the rise in sea levels is 1 to 15 centimeters per year, which causes tidal floods of around 5 to 200 centimeters. The seawall project also aims to address the water supply problem in Jakarta, which relies on groundwater extraction. The wall would include within it a freshwater reservoir to store rainwater and river water and provide clean water for the city. The project's hefty cost of between $50 billion, 778 trillion rupiah, and $60 billion, 933 trillion rupiah, was a necessary expense to address geological concerns on Java's north coast. To your surprise, the Netherlands did the same thing, and it took them 40 years. The challenge is to have political leaders who can think ahead and use all their resources for 40 to 50 years. But the question is how to stop subsidence. Well, experts are saying that it is also important to prevent groundwater extraction. They're of the view that they must also emphasize on how to stop subsidence. 
While the government is considering the seawall project, it is also moving ahead with another ambitious plan. Relocating the national capital from Jakarta to a site within the jungle of East Kalimantan on Borneo Island. There was a plan in 2019 to build a new capital 1,300 kilometers 800 miles from Jakarta, citing the city's chronic flooding and traffic problems as the reason. Construction of the new city, called Nusantara, has begun. Government officials said Nusantara will be a sustainable forest city that puts the environment at the heart of the development and aims to be carbon neutral by 2045. Some experts on Wednesday suggested more environmentally friendly alternatives to reduce tidal floods. The idea of building a gigantic seawall in Jakarta was first proposed in 2010, but it faced opposition from some environmental groups and local politicians, who argued that it would disrupt many livelihoods and damage the marine ecosystem. The experts believe that the main cause of land subsidence in the north coast was uncontrolled groundwater extraction caused by a limited supply of clean water and high demand for buildings and industry. Additionally, heavy vehicles and logistics trucks add to the pressure and compaction of the north coast's alluvial soil, so the best approach would be to choose or combine a more environmentally friendly approach such as restoration of the Jakarta coastal area and mangrove reforestation as a natural barrier to reduce tidal floods, tsunamis and the threat of drowning which is cheaper and easier. What are your thoughts on this? Well, as per current news the construction of the giant seawall has been reviewed with regard to its funding and efficacy. So that's all about our today's episode on innovative construction. Let me know what you believe is the best possible solution. And I'll meet in you the next episode. See you until next time.